do know that tobacco is a cause of cancer and so many other health diseases, but the population has forgotten. And so we need to repeat the message as much as we can, and we have to make sure we get to the most vulnerable of populations. The message may have gotten to them, but we need to repeat it. For example, people who have less than a high school education, about 30% of them still smoke. While the rest of the population, we've made a huge impact. We're down to about 13.7%. So we need to repeat the message, but we also need to connect them to cessation services. So every state has a quit line, for example, and these vulnerable populations can be referred to the quit line. It's 1-800-QUIT-NOW. So cancer is avoidable. About 50 to 60% of cancer in the population can be prevented if the population didn't smoke, was not obese, is physically active, and doesn't drink alcohol. Now we know that there are risk factors for cancer that are not changeable, but those are changeable. Individuals can choose not to engage in those behaviors, they can um, uh, intervene, they can, they can quit smoking, they can lose weight, but we also need to have changes at a societal level, like we've done for smoking, through taxation and laws. So we need to figure out what's the right thing for those other risk factors, and in reducing those risk factors, we could have a profound effect on the cancer burden in our population. So every day, there are new studies that are published in the peer-reviewed literature, including observational studies, the type that I do. And so what should reporters look for for study quality? One is they need to look in the peer-reviewed journals, not the predatory journals, but the, the official journals that um, are the well-qualified, proper journals. So that's number one. Number two, what they should look for are prospective cohort designs, where individuals are recruited, factors are measured, and they're followed over the long term. Those studies are well designed, they discuss um, possible sources of bias, and then um, they are, uh, the results are inferred, and then all those studies do need to be put together. So we don't draw public health conclusions based on one observational study. So reporters should look to see whether there's a body of evidence, whether an official authoritative group has gotten together to review the totality of evidence. Those kinds of studies, whether they're called systematic reviews or they come out as a report from a national academy or professional society, are the ones that are probably the most important to the population for understanding what we should do to prevent cancer. Predatory journals tend to be fly-by-night operations. They are not traditional publishers. They are not professional society publishers. These are little operations that happen to exist because we have the internet. They do not do proper peer review. Often uh, investigators are asked to pay to publish their article, but there's not a review process. And so what should a reporter look for? Well, they want to look for a journal that comes from a professional society or from a legitimate publisher, the big publishing houses um, that are based in, in Europe, for example, or in the U.S.